We're going to make a basic bezel setting, and the bezel is just this strip of metal that goes over a cabochon cut stone. Uh, you can get commercial bezel wire that is already sliced to different heights. This is 3 mil high and 0.3 thick. Uh, this ring has that wire. This ring has 0.5 thick metal. I actually prefer 0.5 fine silver. I buy it by the sheet and I just slice off what I need. Because oftentimes your commercial wire will be a little bit taller, a little bit short. Technically, one-third the height of your stone. If it is a really sharp cut, you'll need less wire to hold it in. But what you can do is just take your little steel rule, sit it next to your stone, and you're actually able to see where the stone starts to curve in and as long as you're past the point where it starts to curve in, it'll hold the stone in no problem. Uh, three, three mil is a good general height. That Of all of the stones that I set, three mil high bezel is what usually works. Uh, but we're, we're going to uh, slice off a piece of three mil high fine silver. When you slice this, it'll always have a bit of a curl. Because it's fine silver, anneal it, you can just pull it and it'll pull it straight. Uh, when you anneal fine silver, keep the flame on for about five seconds and that's it. Take the flame away. It will be annealed. Quench it and then we'll just wrap the metal around the stone. So straighten your bezel wire just by pulling it straight. Now we're going to wrap it around the stone. Hold it with your fingernail against the side of your stone. Push it around the stone and I usually keep my fingernail pushing on the bottom of the wire against the stone. It's so you don't bend it over towards the top. So all the way around, make sure that it's tight against the stone everywhere. And I usually use fingers everywhere. Mark it with a thin texture where it overlaps. And we'll use a nice sharp set of shears Cut it at that point, check it, and we'll go from there. After you cut this with your shears, just pass your file along the edge, making sure you keep it nice and flat so we don't want to curve that. If it's a good join, manipulate the metal until it holds itself closed. It'd be just like a, a big jump ring. Then we'll hold this on our third hand joint up, one piece of hard solder. When you've got this where you think it's good, go back around your stone, push it tightly if it's slightly small, that's fine, because we can stretch it. If it's slightly big, cut it. Um, if the bezel is big, it'll bunch up as you're trying to push it over. Slightly small, then we could just hammer it up uh, gently on a ring mandrel if it's small. Joint up. Make sure that the edges aren't twisted. You want as good a job as possible on this and tiny amount of flex, top and bottom, 
Place one piece of solder with your flex brush so that it goes across the join. Neutral flame. And I just go gently on and off until the flux has dried out. Don't heat the bottom of the bezel. Only heat where the join is. Now once the flux is dry, about 50 mil away on the join, the flux will go clear, the solder will flow. You notice it didn't flow to the joint. You can shift it over a little bit with your solder pick. Yep. Quench it. Pickle it. Check it for fit. It should push over the stone with just a little bit of pressure. Don't clean up the joint at this time. This will be one of the very last things you do. If it fits, we make sure that it's nice and flat. If it isn't flat, you can just use a piece of sandpaper on your bench and sand it back like this. If it has a slightly irregular bit, leave that on the top. Now once again, push it over your stone. Because it's fine silver, when you push it over, it'll keep its shape. So we want to make dead sure it keeps its shape. Now we're going to put that on a base. Make sure the base is flat. It can be anywhere from 0.5 to, well, you could go up to one mil thick if you wanted to, but one mil is overkill. I, I like to use 0.7 on the base for a stone this size. So now we're going to, on the inside, put a piece of solder, a space, a piece of solder, a space, the same size as the solder, all the way around on the inside. I, I like to use the little solder snippers because I can just cut my bits of solder and they fall right inside where I need them. Yep. Yeah. So I've already run a line of flux around the inside of the bezel. Now we use our damp flux brush and just push these pieces of solder where we want them because the solder needs to be fluxed along with the base. So like I'll zoom in So you can see, solder a gap, solder a gap, all the way around on the inside.